It is vitally important to know the characteristics of soil in construction projects, as soil mechanics affects the performance of foundations, backfill, embankments and draining. Erie International designs and manufactures a comprehensive range of soil sampling and testing equipment to meet this requirement in accordance with the international standards for both field and laboratory testing. Every building or structure that is built in or on the earth imposes load on soil supporting the foundations. The stresses set up in the soil cause deformation of the soil, with stress failure being caused by slippage of soil particles which may lead to sliding of one body of soil relative to the surrounding mass. The ELE direct and residual shear apparatus accepts specimens up to 100 mm square or 63 mm in diameter. The use of a microprocessor controlled drive system and keyboard entry gives the apparatus a wide range of features that includes pause and speed reset during the test, RS232 interface, operator programming and a speed and control function, self-test diagnostics and many other features. The apparatus is enclosed in a robustly constructed case, has been designed for floor mounting and is supplied complete with carriage, loading hanger and 10 to 1 lever loading device. The ELE direct shear system can be combined with ELE International's DSU data logger and DS7.3 data analysis software providing a semi-automatic data recording system. There are several items that, you, that accessories that are required to carry out a direct shear test. One is the shear box. The shear box comprises of four sections. The first section is the base. The base is grooved to allow pour water to escape the sample under consolidation. The top cap, where the consolidation pressure is applied, and it's also grooved to allow upper uh, removal of pour water. And the two sections here that are attached together before, before assembly, which are the two parts of the shear box that these are contained in. The sample goes in here and the shear is done at the halfway point. These, the sample also requires a uh, top and bottom porous plate to be put on to prevent particles of the sample escaping with the pour water through the grease while under consolidation. The DSU is also, this, is, this acts as the data logger. This takes your, uh, your transducer inputs and st stores and records them while the machine is under test. It also transmits the, uh, the raw data to the software for analysis. There are the two runners that allow the uh, out shear box to run frictionless, frictionless the crop while the test is carried out. This section is the outer shear box which contains the, the 100 millimeter sample shear box. The sample shear box is locked into place via these two thumb screws and it has an anvil for the horizontal displacement transducer. The, the outer shear box can also be filled with water to provide inundated samples. To record all the data that's required for a shear box, you need three inputs. You have your vertical displacement transducer, which measures the displacement of under the consolidation part of the test. You have a horizontal displacement transducer that measures the distance of shear during the shear part of the test, and you have the S-type load cell with extension that measures the shear force during the shear part of the test. The shear box is placed inside the carriage assembly, made sure it's flat and secure, and the two nylon bolts at the top of the front are used to secure it in place. Next, you apply the center, your porous plate, to the top of the sample, ensuring that it moves past the top edge of the sample at the um, of the shear box. And next, you place the lid of the shear box on top as square as possible. The next step is to move the yoke into position. with a slight seating force. Now move your horizontal, your vertical displacement transducer until it touches the anvil on the top of the oak. A slight movement of the transducer is necessary to take it off its seat. 
Next, we apply our weight to our lever arm to provide the consolidation pressure on the force. The lever arm should be supported by the jack screw to prevent preloading of the sample. The jack screw operates on a 10 to 1 ratio. Depending on the weight that you're putting on, 10 times the weight will be felt in the yoke. So in this case, we're using a 10 kilo, a 2 kilo, and a 1 kilo, and it's 13 kilos, which would be 130 kilo, kilos of weight fed at the sample. So why now that the the sample is in in the uh, in the box and ready for the consolidation phase, we now go to our DS7.3 software. The next point is we press the start test stage and we go to the test initialization stage. This is where you can put your physical properties of your sample in. This will affect the results. It's needed for um, weighing samples if you're drying it afterwards. It, sorry, it does not affect your results of the shear test, but you may need to record these before you take before you take the. Uh, so, sample weight in this case is uh, 55 grams. Specimen condition is dry. Sample height is 15 millimeters. Box area. It's 100 millimetres squared, so it's 100. The hanger weight is always zero. The hanger is neutrally balanced, and therefore the weight does not need to be taken into account. The lever weight is also neutrally balanced and does not need to be taken into account. The lever ratio, however, is always 10 to 1. So you need to change that to 10. The consolidation stage now instructs you on the process from here. It says support the load with the jack, which it already is from the previous stage, the weight applied to the lever arm, and that we release the jack at the start of the consolidation stage. When we press continue, it will give us a countdown from five to one. As soon as the countdown completes, the, lead, the jack screw holding the lever arm up must be removed as quickly as possible. Now we have the weight on hanger and the load we follow the instructions as per what it says in the consolidation stage. So we support the load of the jack, which has been done previously when we applied our sample. We place the weight the part of the lever arm, which we have also done, and we release the jack to start the consolidation stage. When we press continue, now the consolidation phase is finished, you have a graph that shows the consolidation. When there's no further consolidation applying, press the end test stage button. So I ask you to confirm the end test stage command and you end the test stage. Now go to the start of the test stage. You can do as many consolidation stages as you wish before you then continue. So you can add weight or you can decrease weight depending on what you're trying to achieve. Once you're finished with your consolidation stages, you should go to the shearing stage. Based on your uh, consolidation stage results, the software will suggest to you the recommended millimetres per minute for performing the shear test. This can be overridden by in inputting what you feel is the, correct, is the correct amount and it will put an estimated horizontal shear deformation. Removal of these two now allows the two parts of the shear box to move past each other, allowing us to set the machine. We use the digital shear machine to enter our desired logging rate, which in this case is five millimetres a minute. To do so, press the five and the zero until this is full. Press the enter. Once you press the enter, the five millimetres will go up into the top box, ensuring that you understand that this is the rate that the machine will push at. So now we have removed the clamping screws and reset the horizontal and force transducers to zero. 
we start the shearing phase by pressing continue. When the countdown finishes, we press run on the digital shear machine. So, pressing continue. Run at five millimeters a minute. Your graph will show you displacement, vertical displacement, and force. So now the bottom part of the diet of the shear box is moving forwards while the top part is held static. The load is felt through the S-type. No sound is attached to the top part. Any swelling of the sample is, uh, is shown by the vertical displacement. The test stage will automatically complete, at which point you press end test stage. To go to complete the full test, you can go to final measurements. And if you are continuing with your weight, you put in the wet weight and the dry weight of your sample after the test. Remember on the initial phase, we put the, the weights before the test. I'm going to tell you it's now complete and to store the, te the test data ready for analysis. And once you press OK, it saves the files, take the file, and then we go to analysis and reports. Here we see our redirect file, and we need to analyze the test. At this point, it shows us our stress over strain diagram, stress over horizontal displacement. We are looking here to try and find the peak load. In some cases, the test will produce a curve, reach the peak, and then drop away. In other cases, it will just carry on horizontally as this is done. You are looking for the maximum load on the test. The maximum load here is right here. You move the blue, you move the blue crosshair to where you wish to take the analysis. Once you press OK, ask you if the peak strength position has been selected, and carry on. This will now analyse your data for you. And we have the process that file will write the test report. It should generate a report for us. And then in the report files, you should have a Word document. with all of your analysis.